Hi everyone. Topology is not only an important area of mathematics, it's also a really fun subject. And some of the early problems it tackled were ones that anyone could understand and try to solve. We saw in the first of these two introductory videos that topology has to do with the properties of a shape that remain unchanged no matter how much the shape is stretched or twisted. If you tear a shape though and make a hole in it, then you change it in the eyes of a topologist. You change what's called its genus. A sphere for instance has genus 0, whereas a torus or donut shape has genus 1. Topology is a far-ranging subject that's interested in connectivity, in things like networks, pathways and knots. In fact, network theory and knot theory form whole subjects within topology. Topology is also a quite recently developed area of mathematics compared with, say, arithmetic or geometry, which go back thousands of years. It only started out in the 1700s, thanks to the prolific Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler. Euler solved what was perhaps the first problem to arise in topology known as the Bridges of Konigsberg. Here's an old map of the city of Konigsberg in Prussia, known today as Kaliningrad, uh, which lies within Russia. It's situated on the river Pragel, which was famous for its seven bridges, connecting the two banks and also two islands in the river. The local townsfolk came up with a problem. Could you walk across all the bridges in such a way that you crossed all of them exactly once? Many people tried to solve this, but none succeeded. Euler proved that it was actually impossible to do. First, he realized that the exact locations of the bridges and the shapes of the various land masses weren't important. All that mattered was how the bridges connect banks and the islands. He came up with a theorem. If each landmass has an even number of bridges, or if exactly two landmasses have an odd number of bridges, then it's possible to walk across all the bridges exactly once. Otherwise, it can't be done. This problem, and Euler's work on it, became the foundation of what's known as graph theory. A graph is a mathematical structure in which points, called nodes or vertices, are connected by lines, known as edges. In the case of the bridges of Konigsberg, the two riverbanks and two islands become the four vertices of a graph, and the seven bridges its edges. Because there are an even number of vertices but an odd number of edges, there's no route around Konigsberg which crosses every bridge exactly once. Euler was also responsible for another early breakthrough in topology, his discovery of what became known as the Euler characteristic. This applies to three-dimensional flat-sided shapes or polyhedra. The Euler characteristic is the number you get if you add the number of corners or vertices and the number of faces and then take away the number of edges. For all regular polyhedra, like the five platonic solids, the Euler characteristic is always two. That makes them topologically equivalent to a sphere, which makes sense because you could take a cube, for instance, and mold it into a sphere. But there are polyhedra that have an Euler characteristic of zero, which makes them equivalent to a torus. And there are other polyhedra that have negative values for their Euler characteristic. So, we can look back on Euler's discovery now and see it as the first way that was found of classifying objects or surfaces in this new field of topology. The Euler characteristic, it turns out, is directly related to the number of holes in a surface. A surface with no holes, like a sphere, has an Euler characteristic of 2, whereas a surface with one hole, like a torus, has an Euler characteristic of 0. For every additional hole you add, the Euler characteristic decreases by 2. Now let's think about maps. Back in 1852, a South African mathematician, Francis Guthrie, was studying for his degree in England, and he got this idea in his head while colouring in a map of the English counties. He found that he needed only four different colours to colour all the counties, so that no two together were coloured the same. And so he came up with the four-colour theorem, which said this was true in general for all maps. The question was, was he right? 
It's fairly easy to prove that no more than five colours are needed, but proving that four is the most needed was a lot trickier, and in the end it turned out that it could only be done with the help of a computer. The proof finally came in 1976, and being the first major proof accomplished with a computer, it marked an important milestone in mathematics. The four-colour theorem depends on the topology of the surface on which the map is drawn. Four colours are the most needed on the plane and on a sphere, but different numbers of colours are required on different surfaces. Five on a Mobius band, for instance. The torus has a seven-colour theorem, and the three-holed pretzel shape, which is a triple torus, has a nine-colour theorem. Today, topology plays an important role not just in pure maths, but also in science and technology. The 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three British researchers who used topology to explain the surprising electrical properties of thin films of superconductors. Chemists used topology to understand how some biochemicals form knotted molecules, and cosmologists have used topology in models that describe the overall shape of the universe. We'll be doing more videos on topology in the future that explore the subject in greater depth. But for now, thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again soon.